My British forces in flames of war continue to get new toys. Today we'll have a look at the 17-pounder anti-tank platoon. This is the new Battlefront Plastic 17-pounder box in 15mm. Join me for a look inside the box. This is the Plastic 17-pounder anti-tank platoon for late war flames of war. This box set was released as part of the D-Day British forces. Britain started the Second World War with the two-pounder anti-tank gun. This was a 40mm weapon and quite good for the interwar period. However, the loss of equipment in France in 1940 kept the two-pounder in use and production long after it had become inadequate. It was still in widespread use in North Africa, both as an infantry anti-tank gun and as a tank weapon. The later 6-pounder gun, a 57mm weapon, didn't enter service until mid-1942. There was an understanding that an even heavier gun would be needed. The 17-pounder, a 76.2mm or 3-inch gun, was developed. Design was largely completed by the end of 1941, but tooling up for production delayed its entry into service. The appearance of the Tiger tank in North Africa prompted the dispatch of 100 prototype and pre-production 17-pounder guns to the theatre. They arrived in early 1943. A specific carriage for the new gun hadn't been developed, so they were mounted on 25-pounder chassis. This weapon was called the 1725-pounder, or Pheasant. 1943 saw 17-pounder production get into full swing, now mounted on a lower custom-designed wheeled chassis. They were introduced during the Italian campaign and served in northwest Europe after D-Day. 17-pounders were also used to arm tanks. The Sherman Firefly and the A-30 Challenger were both examples of this. The Archer mounted a 17-pounder gun on an obsolete Valentine chassis to create a self-propelled anti-tank gun. It also replaced the 3-inch gun on the M10 tank destroyer in some British units. A derivative called the 77mm HV was designed specifically for tank use and was mounted on the Comet. If we look at the back of the box, there's images of two completed guns and an assembly diagram. The kit has only nine parts, excluding base and crew, so should be quick and easy to assemble. The box contains parts to make four 17-pounder guns and has two unit cards. You can build either the standard 17-pounder anti-tank platoon or the airborne 17-pounder platoon. You get cards for both. To help with this, you get two full sets of crew figures for each gun one of generic British gunners and one in paratroop uniforms. All up there are eight crew sprues, four of each. These are the new thermoplastic. It's the first time I've seen it. This material feels a bit harder than the previous flexible plastic, and detail seems fairly sharp. Also inside are four large bases with two sprues of base plugs. Let's look at the plastic. Each 17-pounder gun comes on a single sprue of medium green plastic. Parts count is limited with just nine parts for each gun. Overall, detail is sharp and crisp and moulded in strong relief. This part of the sprue has the trail legs and carriage and the wheels, as well as the gun and breech. The wheels have some good tread detail. The trail legs and carriage are moulded as a single piece. This will help avoid any issues about the correct angle to set them during assembly. The long 17-pounder gun barrel is nice and straight, with the characteristic rounded muzzle brake. Having the breech as a separate piece should allow more detail on the part. The other end of the sprue has the gun shield, trunnion pieces, sight optic and an ammunition box. The box is just extra stowage for base decoration. The trunnion is two pieces that fit around the barrel part, and has a square peg which glues into the mounting hole on the carriage. The large gun shield affixes to the carriage. There's quite a bit of bolt and panel detail here as well as a section of rope. The drag rope was used to manhandle these heavy guns if they needed to be repositioned by the crew. The 17-pounder shield has rounded scalloped parts that look like handholds on the top edge of the shield. These are actually open loops but are moulded solid on this kit. They would just be too fragile otherwise. So that's the kit parts. I have two of these guns in resin and metal, and I'm happy to have them available in plastic now. 
The plastic detail is just a bit crisper and cleaner. Let's look at the 17 pounder on the table. It's a gun unit with the gun shield and large gun special rules. Gun shield gives the crew bulletproof cover when shot at from in front of the team's base. This means attackers firing from the front need to pass a firepower test to destroy the gun. Gun shield doesn't provide any cover from bombardments, or if the gun moved at dash speed. Large gun means the 17 pounder can't be placed inside a building. It also means the unit can't be placed in ambush within 16 inches or 40 centimetres of the enemy. Keep this limitation in mind if you plan to spring these in an ambush. Motivation is a confident 4 plus. The airborne rating is even better with a 3 plus. Skill is trained with a 4 plus and the assault is 5 plus. These guns are not really meant for a close in fight. They are careful being hit on a 4 plus. They have a 4 plus gun save. This is a large and bulky unit. It doesn't have a tactical move speed. Terrain dash is 2 inches or 5 centimetres, up to 4 inches or 10 centimetres cross country or on a road. These guns are just too big to be moved effectively by hand. No tactical move means these guns are likely to be captured if they have to break off and fall back in an assault. Make sure to support them with an infantry screen to keep the enemy a safe distance away. The 17 pounder gun stat line has a 36 inch or 90 centimetre range with a halted rate of fire 2 and moving at 1. The moving rate of fire is for use if the gun unit is pinned down. Anti-tank is 14 with a 3 plus firepower. That's a reasonable punch and is a welcome anti-tank boost for British forces which have traditionally struggled to penetrate heavier late war tanks. The special rules are forward firing, meaning it can only shoot at targets fully in front of the team, and no HE. No HE adds a plus one to hit if targeting infantry or gun teams. This gun and its ammunition are optimised for anti-tank work. British formations in 1944 usually have six-pounder guns as their organic anti-tank gun, if they have any at all. The heavier 17-pounder guns were divisional level support assets. Here's the support choices for D-Day British forces. You can take up to two troops of 17-pounder guns. That's a lot of firepower. Two guns are six points, while four is 12 points. That's only one or two points more than the equivalent number of six-pounders. It ups your AT from 11 to 14 with an improved firepower rating as well. This sounds great, but remember the 17-pounder guns are divisional support rather than organic to a formation so they don't count towards keeping the formation on the table. Just keep that in mind. Another alternative is to take M10Cs with the 17 pounder upgrade. This upgrades their AT from the 12 of the 3 inch gun to the 14 of the 17 pounder. More points, but you do get mobility and some armour protection. So there are a few ways to get 17 pounders onto the table for the British. I'm glad to see the 17 pounder guns in plastic. I'll be including them in my British tournament force, either to cover my infantry or as a nasty surprise ambush. It's a simple kit and quick to build, but it looks great. I'm very glad to see this in plastic and it's well up to Battlefront's usual standard. Having the airborne and standard crews is good and saves having two separate products for retailers. The spare crew will come in handy for the bits box. The new thermoplastic seems stiffer than the flexible plastic, and the level of detail looks okay. I'll let you know how I go working with them.